APC presidential aspirant and former governor of Zamfara State, Senator Ahmed Sani Yerima has promised to eradicate the issue of ignorance and implement citizenship education to educate Nigerians on their rights and also expand educational sector across the state if elected as president in the forthcoming presidential elections. Addressing the pressmen ahead of APC party primaries in Abuja, Senator Ahmed Sani Yerima reiterated the need for free education and, exp and establishment of resourceful banks as platforms where Nigerians can take loans and start up businesses so as to help curb poverty among the people. He added that his governance will monitor the affairs of extremists, work on insecurity challenges facing the country, and also to ensure religious and gender equity in the country. The first day I declared my intention and my desire to contest for the office of the president, I also pledged to work on three very important problems of this country, which I saw at that time, which I still believe the challenges of this country, the insecurity, like I said, unbanditry, kidnappings, and so on and so on. Then the problem of poverty, which is a major, major problem Nigerian youth and women and other members of the public are facing. You have people who have graduated in the last 10 years and they are working around after their youth service with certificates looking for a job. And if people are engaged productively, they have something doing. All these insecurity challenges will be a thing of the past. The third problem I believe Nigeria need to address is the issue of ignorance. Ignorance is somehow different from illiteracy because you can find some people who are educated but they're ignorant because either they don't know themselves or they don't know their society. I just give you one example of ignorance that we are facing today. This issue of uh, zoning, I know you'll ask question about it. People are yearning, crying for zoning. When our constitution, which is a basic document guiding our democratic development, our democracy, does not have anything called zoning in it. There are sections in the constitution that uh, shows the qualification required for anybody to aspire for any office, from a chairman of local government to state assembly, to governorship, to senators, national assembly members, to the president office of the president. You see, the magic we need in Nigeria today is fighting of these two problems, poverty and ignorance. Once Nigerians have something to do, you, you, you see, uh, if I'm elected, the president has done very well in fighting corruption. You can see corruption is now under the table. But it's also dangerous to have corruption under the table. You see in the same system, people are arrested and being prosecuted for corruption. How can Nigeria, Nigeria take 130 billion for himself and his family to do what? So if he is properly and religiously educated, the work my Ministry for Legal Affairs is going to do will change this, 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 this scenario, the thinking of Nigerians. That you need to, one, you fear God. Many people, your grandparents were in this world and they died. Your parents, some of our parents are dead. In fact, your children die. And we also, we go to, to you see what Rochas did. I saw a video where he, he, he laid on, on floor, saying, my God, oh God, God do this. He knows God. So every Nigerian knows about God. Let's obey God. You see, consensus is part of Nigerian law. The Electoral Act allows for consensus, direct or indirect primaries. So, so long as the party decides to say they are going for consensus, and I'm out of it, I will accept the decision of the party. I will not leave the party. I've been in AMP, APP, which transformed after merger to become AMPP, and became APC when we joined the ACN and CPC to, to match. So I'm a politician, a loyal party member. I'll abide by any decision my party takes. And on insecurity, I have told you just now, when I was governor, there was no insecurity. Check police record. In our last days, 2006, we had the Council of State meeting. And the IG then 
was bring, t talking about you know security issue in each state, and he said that Zamfara is 0.2 percent. Why? Because you see, in governance, you need to first of all take care of the people. My agricultural policy was so robust. I called it uh, uh, Zakarep, comprehensive Zamfara State Comprehensive Agricultural Program. When I was living, I left. I handed over to my successor more than 150,000 metric tons of grains. There was so much food that nobody wants to go and, I mean, sleep, nobody can sleep hungry. I was giving civil servants loan of grains. A messenger can take 20 bags, 20, 100 kilograms of bags of grains, and he will pay in five years. So, so if people are having something to do, the insecurity will disappear. I had uh, Zampara State Poverty Alleviation Program. This poverty, what do you call it? Even the anti-corruption. I started the anti-corruption. I started the poverty uh, alleviation program before the federal government in that time. Check the record. Zampara established the first poverty alleviation program before the federal government established its own. Then when I established the Forest State Anti-Corruption Commission, then President Oshuluk Shobaju now brought ICPC and later EFCC. So you need to think well. Governance is about service, service to humanity. It's not about uh, you want to be present because you will, as a president, you wake up one morning and say nobody should come out, then nobody will come out. No. You need to also recruit more police in Nigeria. In Ethiopia, they have about 50 million population, and their police strength is more than 1 million. In Nigeria, we are more than 250 million but we have less than 500,000 policemen. So you need to make sure you do massive recruitment, massive training, massive equipping of police, give them welfare, enough welfare package, so that they will not stop you on the road and collect something from you. If you know that they have also retirement benefits, that even after, if they die in service, their children will, not, will be taken care of by government. They will not care, because every Nigerian now, not to be only thinking of himself, they are thinking of their family. A police officer is going for duty, or a military officer is going for duty. But even while, in, while alive, his family will be crying for food or crying for school fees. No, if this is changed, you will see everybody busy doing it, protecting the lives and protect properties of the people. Ojane Samson reporting for GTV Africa.